We call where we stand today the Cathedral of St. Joseph Beacon of Hope. And it is a place for prayer, for reflection, for rest, and for sacred art to lift spirits. God is truly present here. Yet when we restored this space, we did not do so to create a beautiful place just to be looked at, but rather as a sign of God's love and an inspiration to go out from here and live our faith actively in the world, to love others as Christ has loved us. Today we are announcing preliminary plans for how we might do so in a new way. Our faith calls us to be especially attentive to the poor, the vulnerable, and those in need. It is one way we live our core belief and respect for life, at conception, at natural death, and during all the years in between. Pope Francis, in his recently released message for Lent, noted that we Christians are called to confront the poverty of our brothers and sisters, to touch it, to make it our own, and to take practical steps to alleviate it. And he identifies those who deserve our attention as those living in conditions opposed to human dignity, those who lack basic rights and needs, such as food, water, hygiene, work, and the opportunity to develop and grow culturally. He continued, in the poor and outcast, we see Christ's face. By loving and helping the poor, we love and serve Christ. Our local church has long served Christ in this way. Under the leadership of Bishop Paul V. Dudley, sixth bishop of Sioux Falls, some 30 years ago, community entities came together to love in that way. This resulted in the establishment of the banquet, St. Francis House, and the Good Shepherd Center, among other ministries serving social outreach. Thousands of individuals and families have been provided immediate personal assistance while giving a helping hand to move beyond the difficult moments of the day. In a similar way, under the leadership of Bishop Robert J. Carlson, St. Joseph Catholic Housing was established to provide dignified and affordable housing for senior citizens and others of lower income. Yet the need to offer hope and a helping hand continues to grow in my time as Bishop of Sioux Falls, as this metropolitan area realizes new challenges resulting from growth in population and greater diversity. Today we have a unique opportunity to build on what is currently in place and address the changed circumstances of our times. We can do so in ways that are more efficient, more comprehensive, more stable, more secure, and more helpful to the guests in our ministries and to those who walk with them. Therefore, I'm pleased to announce today that the Diocese of Sioux Falls has entered into an agreement to purchase an empty building located at 101 North Indiana Avenue most recently used as a warehouse. After substantial renovation and with the Holy Spirit's guidance, the property presents an opportunity to enhance outreach ministries already serving the needy. In addition, we may be able to expand these services with larger and modern facilities while allowing better coordination of the limited resources available to the poor in our midst. We are considering with its board the possibility that the beautiful ministry of the Good Shepherd Center, which offers day shelter, relocate to the new building. Its current facility, which the diocese owns and maintains, is in need of substantial repair and is limited in space. A new facility would allow the Good Shepherd Center to provide an expanded outreach in a more modern and appropriate environment. This new facility could also provide a safe and stable location for overnight shelter for men, women, and families when the weather is inhospitable. Other agencies compatible with our mission may also be located there. While there are many details and options to be considered in the days ahead, as the Holy Father has encouraged us, this vision that I am announcing today ought to be pursued. I'm committed to doing so. 
Therefore, this afternoon, the Diocese of Sioux Falls filed an application for a, con a conditional use permit with the City of Sioux Falls. This permit, which is required by city code in order to provide shelter to guests, would allow further planning and will encourage continued consultation with ministry and service providers, key stakeholders, and neighbors. Without the required permission, exploration into the opportunity this property on Indiana Avenue lends us will have to be discontinued. A neighborhood meeting to allow comments, to answer questions, and to invite suggestions has been scheduled for 7 o'clock p.m. on Thursday, February 20th at the Our Lady of Guadalupe Little Flower School Gym. Other opportunities for discussion and consultation will also be available. Comments may be sent to my office as well. Should we be able to move forward with this vision? Is my intention to name this new facility the Bishop Dudley Hospitality Center as a tribute to my predecessor, whose witness continues through these caring, Christ-centered ministries. A community-wide capital campaign to raise funds for the renovation of the building and its operational costs will be undertaken. Our goal is that through the continued cooperative efforts of social service providers, government entities, and the private sector, including other ecclesial communities, we will offer better and more comprehensive assistance to those struggling today and give them hope for a better tomorrow. We look forward to working together to assume as best we can our joint responsibility to assure that all persons are treated with dignity and that we see and serve Christ in the poor and outcast. May God bless them and all of you. Thank you. <laughs> Let me just say it's important that we, that, that I emphasize that we need conversations, we need consultation, we need those who are in the ministries, who are in the neighborhood, and in the community to help us identify the needs better and then figure out with us the way that we can respond to them. This is not a done deal. This is the beginning of what is going to be an important process. Any questions? What will we be spending? We don't really know what we're spending yet. The, pro the purchase price is about $750,000 $750, for this big building and, and the parking lot and all of that. So, but the renovation of that, this is going to be a multi-million dollar because it's an open warehouse, which is really a great thing because it allows us to do whatever we need to do without having to incur costs of deconstruction as opposed to construction. Well, probably be open in phases. We are hopeful if things go smoothly, which means quickly, um, that we could have, my goal would be by next winter. Now, whether that's feasible, we'll have to see, but the sooner the better. There's a great need and there's a great opportunity. <coughs> 14 by, yep. But I'm an optimist, so <laughs> that's what faith is all about, so. <laughs> Well, we'll look at that. Obviously, uh, um, it's a good facility. It's done beautiful work over the years. It's somewhat limited in space. It, the building itself needs great attention. So uh, we'll look at whether there's another use or whether we, we uh, sell it to help fund the new facility. We haven't made that decision finally yet. You know, look... Everything's on the plate, you know, it's, I'm not sure that two centers can be maintained in that way, but uh, is there another ministry perhaps that we can use? I don't know, but. Uh. Anyone else? So that long statement apparently covered things, huh? <laughs> Which is good, this is the first step 
you know, we'll keep you informed along the way. And uh, as I say, we're, we're just very, it's very important that people come forward and raise issues we ought to consider, opportunities that we may not have thought about, um, and working together as a community. One of the great things I've learned since I became bishop here seven years ago is the great generosity and cooperation among the people in the city of Sioux Falls. It's a great, it's a great gift, and I expect that to be shown as we move forward with this, this opportunity.